Frank Herbert was a really clever guy who liked deserts and spacey shit, so in 1965 he wrote Dune. The story starts on a planet about 20,000 years into the future where, wait, so several thousand years before the beginning of the book, this guy called Holtzman gets into an accident, and just as he's about to die, someone uploads his brain into a computer, and he studies all of the physics, and invents, like, interstellar travel, and tells everyone how to do it. Anyway, thousands of years after that, mankind has a galactic empire, there's this itty bitty desert planet called Dune. Wait, hang on, so back up a second, we need to talk about the Bene Gesserit first, who are like the sacred order of chicks who have been around for ages. They can control people with a thing called the voice, as well as being resistant to poison, being able to choose the gender of their babies, choosing whether they conceive or not. <laughs> And they've had this breeding program going on for ages where they want to breed the Kwisatz Haderach, which is this perfect godlike creature they'll use to conquer the universe. Okay, so now we get to June, which is this. Ah, shit. Okay, wait. Sorry, one more thing. Um, so robots got a bit, like, mouthy a few thousand years ago, so humans just wiped them out. And now it's illegal to build an AI, so everything has to be done by humans. That means all multiplication, addition, and piloting fucking spaceships. So this class of people exist called the Mentats, who are these slick, goofy-haired cats who are super-duper clever. Now anyone who's anyone has their own personal Mentat for strategizing or crossword puzzles or whatever, and they come in three different flavors hypothesizers who hypothesize, memorizers who memorize, and processors who, well, you get it, yeah? So this brings us to June, which is really called Arrakis, where the story starts with, oh, yeah, uh, the Emperor of the Galaxy is called the Emperor, and he just, like, rules stuff, because, yeah. So June is, oh, and there's this stuff called Spice, and it's pretty much the most expensive commodity in the universe, because it slows aging, and pilots use it to guide spaceships, and Bene Gesserit chicks take it to recall everything that happened to their ancestors ever, a bit like Assassin's Creed, but better. And you can use it to make coats, too, and hats, so that's nice, isn't it? And the only place you can get Spice is, oh, fuck. What's it called? Uh, ah, June! Yes, welcome to Arrakis. Also known as June, a desert planet where it's so hot you have to wear a special suit to keep the moisture in your body and a hundred foot sandworms chill in the desert and eat people. So there's the indigenous population, the Fremen, who have sexy blue glowing eyes because they use so much spice, and then there are the houses. On June we find House Harkonnen, who are generally quite fat and enjoy torture, and House Atreides, who are pretty good looking, and are governed by this guy called Leto Atreides. Leto has a son called Paul and a wife, who's kind of secretly Bene Gesserit and was supposed to have a daughter, but loved Leto so much she gave him a son instead and the Bene Gesserit are like quite pissed about this because it sort of fucked up their breeding program. And the whole Atreides family have come to Dune to wrestle control of the spice from the Harkonnen, who are probably just eating it anyway. Things go uh, less than well, and the Harkonnens pretty much destroy House Atreides, killing Duke Leto and forcing his wife and child into the desert. There they join forces with the Fremen, and Jessica teaches them to do all that Bene Gesserit nonsense, and everyone becomes a wizard. Jessica drinks concentrated spice, becoming an all round cosmic badass, meanwhile, bestowing the same power on her daughter, Alia, who is still in the womb. After loads of spice and having all that training from his mum, Paul begins to see into the future, and concocts a plan to begin a jihad against the Harkonnen using the Fremen. However, he also sees that if he's not careful, the Fremen will go too far with it, and take the jihad out into space and just generally fuck everything up. Just for good measure, he knocks up a Fremen chick and has a son who he calls Leto after his dead father, but gets a bit, like, killed later, so we don't have to talk about him. Meanwhile, Alia, Paul's wizardy sister, is captured by the Harkonnens, but it's alright because she kills the Baron Harkonnen because she's, you know, got wizard shit going on. Paul has more or less become the head of the Fremen, and under the cover of a sandstorm, leads an attack on the capital city where the Harkonnens are hauled up. He confronts the newly installed Baron Harkonnen, who's like, could you fuck off a bit, please? And Paul stabs him up quite badly. Now in control of Arrakis, Paul gives the Emperor a little ring on the old dog and bone and says, Alright, me old China. Yeah, that spice thing, uh, that's mine now, so if you don't stop being Emperor, I'm gonna blow it all up, and that means no more space travel, okay? And he gives the Bene Gesserit a ring as well and says much the same thing, and everyone pretty much bows down to Paul, and Paul becomes Johnny Big Balls of June and the galaxy. Marries the daughter of the Emperor, and game on! Except in his visions of the future, he realises even though he was really careful, the Fremen are still going to take their jihad out to the stars anyway. So good job, Paul. Good job. But what a bloody pickle you're in now, eh? June.